This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global, Ranchelia Binsk, Russia. Two days out from fight night, joined by the beast from the east, Anthony Yard. Everything did you, good? Did you get me drinking water? I did. And the burp. Oh, well. That's just me and. <laughs> <laughs> Mandatory challenger to Sergei Kovalev. Mandatory. WBO title, we will talk about that in a bit, but first, you got here. Uh, yes. Landed on was it Sunday night or Monday night, and uh, your luggage wasn't here. Now, the fact that it arrived the next morning, let's just be brutally honest about it. The fact that you and Tunde were the only two passengers <laughs> in the whole flight, and you were business class. Um, do you think there was something dodgy going on there? A hundred percent. When it first happened, obviously I'm a, I'm a cool cat, very calm. When it first happened, I was like, so I looked around and I said, why has everyone else got their luggage? So I asked the woman, I said, is it only us two? She said, yeah, um, I'll find out where they are. She called up, they said they're still in Moscow, stuck in Moscow. I said, okay. <laughs> but again, a raised eyebrow. Um, I'm, just, I'm just very positive, man. I try not to let anything phase me. Um, if it's games they're playing, then it's games they're playing. What can you do about it? You're here, you're in Russia. Um, you just got to go out there and do your job on fighting it. Must admit, when I saw that at the airport, when I was flying from Heathrow and I saw the clip BT put out that you lost your luggage, I was concerned mm -hmm. for you throughout the week in terms of the food, mm -hmm. the scales, the mm -hmm. water. But I have to say, since we've been here, I can see you've got loads of bottled water here. You've got calibrated scales. Mm -hmm. Everything actually, actually been smooth since the luggage. Everything's been smooth, if I've been honest. Um, you know, they, they've chauffeured us around. Um, been very prompt on time and very professional. I can't lie, very professional. Um, as as you just said, they got calibrated skills in my room. They calibrated it in front of me as well. Left a certificate. They bought it on weight store, so I don't know. <laughs> Again, that's how paranoid I am. Um, the water that, that's in the room, I don't even drink the water. I'll go to a shop and get water. Let me tell you something that's funny as well. So in England, yeah, I don't care, I'm still drinking it, I don't care. But the water's out of date. This says the 18th of the 8th, 2019. That's gone. <laughs> That's what it says. I'll show you lava. Lava went direct. <laughs> the other bottle I had said the same thing. Um, but it was it was an earlier date. It was something like May of 2019 or 18. Yeah, 2019. And um, I showed Tunde. Tunde was like, no, Tunde was so upset. He said, so I'll be drinking out of date water. I said, you know, it might just be that's when it was packaged, mm. that's when it was shipped. They might do things different over here. Again, just trying not to. I'm still drinking it anyway. It, ta it tastes a bit different. <laughs> Don't taste as clean as every other Buxton and um, all them kind of drinks. But yeah, man, just got to make do with what you got. Before we came out here, all the talk was, oh, these Russians are scary people. <laughs> um, how are they going to treat you, etc. You landed at the airport, you got mobbed uh, by fans waiting for you to arrive and then since we've got here the Russians have been very nice people friendly accommodating that's how I felt and it's, I'm sure it's been the same for you 100% um, it's like I don't know if it's because we're here for boxing I don't know if it's because um, out here we're seen as famous but I can't I can't fault it you know I've been treated worse in, in East London <laughs> I'll be honest with you people are here they're smiling shaking your hand nodding um, a lot of people don't speak no English, but they're trying to be as helpful as they can. Um, we went to the press conference. A lot of the media was Russian. They gave a good reception as well. Wanted pictures with me. Um, asked me to sign things for them. Very, very polite. Um, the food here has been all right. On the plane, the food was banging. I can't even lie to nobody. I usually don't eat plain food. Um, but the food was nice. And um, usually when I eat plain food, I don't know if it's because it's high up, it like messes with my belly or whatever, but I was hungry. So I said, let me taste that, let me just taste a little bit. The discipline went out the window, I waxed off the whole thing. Um, but it was nice, the food was, even my sister as well, she said the same thing, she was, she was surprised how nice the food was on the plane. And she flew economy. Um, we flew in business class, so I think it might have been different food, but the food was creme de la creme, it was nice. It's good to hear. I want to touch on yesterday actually, when you came face to face with Sergei for the first time. Now, it's obvious that he did turn away first. Do you read anything into that, Anthony? Not really, not really. That's just the way I am. 
some people ain't like that. Some people don't when they even look at their opponent. Some people will look at the opponent's forehead. Some people will turn away like as soon as they got the pictures taken. Me, I'm um, <sighs> just the way I've been always been built from when I was young. That's why a lot of people in East London get into problem. You're looking at me. Why are you looking at me? I look at you. You're looking away first, and then it turns into something. But in that aspect, that's why I've grown up. If someone's looking at me, I look away straight away. <laughs> Especially if I don't know you. If you don't wave at me, or you don't say, yo, Anthony, or whatever, because I have to see it, it's like I'm a different person than I was back then. People know me as a boxer now. Um, so people are looking at me to see if it's me. People have sometimes been looking at me for a good 10 minutes in the barbershop, staring, but squinting their eyes. Some people might need glasses, you don't know. And then when I'm leaving, they're like, oh, Anthony, keep doing your thing. Back in the day, that would have been something. <laughs> I'm like, what are you looking at? Why are you staring at me like that? We would not even say nothing. But again, you grow out of that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's been a journey, man. It's been a journey. Let's talk about the journey, actually. Right from the start, before boxing, growing up in East London, again, we've heard, oh, you're coming out to Russia, scary mm. place, etc. But you've publicly said you've had guns pulled your new uh, in Hackney, where you grew up. Is that where you grew up? You know, I was born in Hackney, but I grew up in that like, Stratford, the first gate. But right, it don't matter where you grew up. <laughs> Again, things happen in Forest Gate. People come to Forest Gate, um, Stratford. People came to Stratford. I remember that one time there was a, the, the maddest thing happened where so much South London boys just came to Stratford. I was in Stratford, I lived in Stratford, but it didn't matter where you were from. <laughs> you were outnumbered. Um, but yeah, when I was saying, like, that was just a quote that the Daily Mail put, you know, I'm used to hostile situations, but I've had guns pulled out of me. Yes, there's been a couple of occasions where I've had a gun pulled out of me. But I wasn't a gangbanger. I wasn't out on the roadside, you know, doing anything mad. It's just you find yourself in altercation sometimes. You find yourself in the wrong area, the wrong place, wrong time, where there are gangs, where there are like gang affiliated situations happening. And um, you find yourself in situations. Again, that's not something I would talk on. But um, yeah, I left the situation okay. I know the Russians have been really accommodating, even if they were playing dirty tricks on you throughout this fight week. Mm -hmm. I don't think that would phase you though, would it? I'll be honest with you. I'm I'm just a different individual, man. It's like I'm this is this is what I tell people that want motivation, people that wanna how do you do it, how do you make the choice to do something. You don't know how it's gonna be until you do it. And me as a as a person, yeah, I don't know what to expect when I go out here. I don't know what to expect. Um I still don't know what to expect. The fight in here, yeah. But it's just a thing of, when you've got a certain character, you just, to some degree, you don't care. You don't care, you just want to go out there and do your best, challenge yourself. And since I've been here, even me just getting on a plane, coming here, signing a contract, has made me a better person, a stronger person. Because I've challenged something. You get what I'm saying? A lot of people don't do stuff because of fear. Fear don't exist to me. I say to ask myself a question, I ask myself an honest question. Why are you not going to do it? And when you're honest with yourself, nine times out of ten, you say, because you're scared or because you've got fear. You're fearful of this, you're fearful of that. With me, fear don't exist. Why are you not going there? Why don't you want to fight for, why are you not going to fight for the world title? That's why when it was first put to me, I jumped up. I was in a sauna with Tunde. I jumped up and I said, yes, yeah, so we're fighting for the world title, we're ready. And he goes, no, not yet. And that wasn't even enough to do with fear, that was just tactical plans. You know, they wanted me to be mandatory first. A couple more fights, they think I'll be mandatory. Two more fights, I was mandatory. The third fight, no, the f two two fights after that, um, I was put in a number one position. And the fight after that, I was made officially mandatory. So, again, different ball game, different negotiation. So, again, that's business. But in terms of the fights and challenging yourself, and look, I'm out here in Russia fighting Kovalev. I'm not fighting a paper champion. I'm fighting the guy that's been feared in the division for years. Um, so, when I go out there and pull it off now, and I talk like this because you need to be confident. If you're not confident within yourself, why are you boxing? <laughs> if you're not confident within anything, you should be doing something else. And um, yeah, when I pull this off, it's just gonna, the feeling is gonna be something I've never felt before. Mm. The journey is crazy. Cannon Town, Peacock, mud! Peacock <laughs> Gym, you know, the Brentwood Centre, Royal Albert Hall, which was really nice, the Copper Box. Did you box at the Copper Box? Yeah, better. Yeah. I, fought, I fought there four times. Four times, obviously the Brentwood Centre yeah. you mentioned. And now you're seeing yourself on billboards <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? in some little town in Russia, in Chelyabinsk, mm. which is apparently the most dangerous place in Russia, apparently. It's mad. If you look outside afterwards, show the view. The view, is, you can see that it's, it's a bit, it's a bit poverty driven. 
you can see it. I'm looking outside, I'm seeing a lot of trees. I'm seeing just a forest and some flats that don't look like they've been touched in years. And um, it, just reminds, it reminds me of like an estate in Hackney, an estate in Stratford growing up, an estate in Forest Gate. Um, it just reminds me of certain areas. And um, yeah, the, the woman, when the woman from the promotion over here, RCC, she just advised me, um, but if you're not with us, they don't advise us to go out traveling anywhere because this is meant to be one of the most dangerous places in Russia. You won't, you, we won't see that because we're in the hotel, we're in a part that's really secluded from down there, um, and there's a box of promotion going over here, so that there's security and police everywhere. Um, but she just advised us, yeah, just you know, be careful if you need anything, give us a call and things like that. But other than that, it's been. As the Cockney guys say in, in East London, it's been crusty. <laughs> it's been good. What was your reaction when you saw your face on that billboard? There's loads of them. That's what surprised me. We had a, um, a video shoot to do, a, prom a promo shoot. And when we were driving, I saw about seven posters in a 15 minute journey. And the woman said to me, I said, I said, oh, there's a poster. She goes, oh, they're everywhere. If you drive around, they're everywhere, all over the city. Um, and that wasn't even a big one, she said. Some of them are massive. Um, it's, it's, it's surreal. It's surreal. I started boxing. I turned professional four years ago. So, man, I'm not going to keep going on about how many amateur fights I had, etc. But in total, amateur and professional, I've had less fights in total than Kovalev's had as a professional. And he had a good amateur background. So again, I'm out here doing this thing. I'm out here just showing people, don't be fearful of nothing. What are you scared of? Someone else's opinion. What are you scared of? Failure. Why? It don't, all that stuff don't matter. That's a weak-minded mentality. If you think like that, you're never going to achieve nothing in life. Even, you know, um, when you're doing a business, the business might not go well first time, second time, third time, but eventually you're going to pick up on habits. You're going to get better at it. Go for it. People say, oh, yeah, but I can't risk losing my job. I won't have no money. I didn't have no money for like two years. Two solid jails, bumping the train. Oh, the, I will say this on camera because people can relate. Stealing from shops. Um, literally not stealing anything mad. I'm, I was stealing things that I needed. Yogurts, <laughs> fruits, <laughs> sweets and chocolate. And then again, I formed a relationship with the, one, of the, one of the bosses from the area. You know, you call the shop man, boss, boss man. man. Yeah. He says to me, okay, pay me, pay me later, pay me tomorrow. And um, that was a lot to do with pride. I didn't let ask my mom for money. Um, Again, my mum was my mum had her own business. She had her own business. I won't say businesses, but she had her own business, etc. And um, yeah, when she lost the business due to stupid decisions trying to bring people in, etc. Um, I could see, you know, you can see like my dad wasn't really around to be supporting office. My mum was doing everything herself. And um, when I saw that she was like, she wasn't as flat like as thing of her money. Like we used to, she used to bring cash home and we used to have to count it and take it to the bank. My mum always showed us the aspects of business. Um, and then when I didn't see that no more, I was like, okay, let me not ask my mum for money today. Let me go and see if I can get it myself. I'm like 15 now, 16, or probably younger than that, 14, 15. Let me see if I can, I used to go to Wembley Market. Yeah. I'll tell the story now as well, because it was a funny story in school. I used to go to Wembley Market before anyone knew about it. Buy the tracksuits, the, um, the, the bags, I won't say what name brands they were, but I used to go out and I used to sell them in school. Cause, uh, Cause I had a certain demeanor in school. No one used to, no one used to question me, but I said, yeah, this is how much it is. Us made so many sales in school. And there was one idiot <laughs> that picked up on where I was getting my stuff from. And he went and started telling people. So me and him had a little altercation that ended in my favor. <laughs> I, won't, I won't talk about this kind of stuff, but I was so angry. I see it, I was like, you're taking money out of my pocket. Well, what are you doing? And um, yeah, that's, that just always showed, like, I've always had that little hustle mentality. And um, that's a story for, like, when I was in school growing up. I was thinking about all this stuff. Since I've been here, I've had loads of thinking to do. <laughs> There's nothing to do. I don't really have the TV on because it's all in Russian. Um, I've just been on my phone, um, looking over because the arena is literally next door. I can see the arena from where I am. And just, um, just waiting for Saturday, you know, less than two days to go. Waiting tomorrow. Looking forward to it, man. Talking about that hustle, you had to show that with Tunde as well at the start of the relationship. Mm. Uh, I know you asked him 
whether he could train you. Mm. And then he guy said he said win something, and then you won the Harringay Cup, was it? Mm -hmm. Just talk to me about how that relationship with Tunde started, and after he won the Harringay Cup, mm. yeah, what happened after that? Um, I'll tell you in a bit more detail. Basically, um, yeah, so a, a girl that I knew, Jolene, very good friend. I met her from my friend Curtis, um, at athletics track. Um, we were speaking whilst we were running or whatever. And um, we started talking about boxing. And I said, yeah, I'm into boxing. This is what I'm doing now. Um, I was amateur at the time, training with Tony Cece. And she said that, oh, she's going to come to do some training because she's an athlete. She wants to do different forms of training. So Curtis came, they all come to the gym. She saw me training. She was like, you're actually good. Like, it's mad. Like, have you ever heard of Tunde? I said, yeah, I see him on YouTube, like doing the pads. Like, at the time, I was like, yeah, the mayor of pads. And she was like, yeah, he's, out. he's my good friend. Um, I think you should come up there. So I was like, oh, yeah, I don't mind. I'll come up, see what it's like. She spoke to him. Um, he said, yeah, tell him to come up at 5 30 in the morning. I said, what? What are you talking about? 5 30 in the morning. Are you alright? Anyway, I went 5 30 in the morning. I was moody because of the time. I don't even think I slept. I just didn't sleep. And um, I went there. Train on um, a Tunde gave me like ten minutes of pad work, about ten minutes, and I was like, I come all come here this time for ten minutes of pads. Um, he had a boy Otto and Otto Junior Silva. He was on the pads for like thirty five minutes, and I was like, yeah, like, I ain't got no money, but I want to do longer on the pads. Like I'm, I'm trying to be a boxer, and he's like, I don't train amateurs, um, especially for free. Like I don't train amateurs. I train professionals. Um, or if you're trying to be professional, I said, yeah, but not yet, obviously, I'm just starting off. And then, um, yeah, I came back, done the same thing, 10 minutes of pads. One time it was even five minutes of pads. Again, kept coming back, I was persistent, very, very persistent. And um, there, f there was a gang of us like, f that formed a lot of fighters. There was a few fighters there. So the more people that came, the less pads I got. <laughs> and I was just work the bag or watch, pick up on things. And um, one day, I think, I think I had a, I think I had a little bit of disagreement with Sunday. We had a disagreement about something. I think I was late or something. And he goes, like, I'm training you for free. You're coming in late. Like he was very aggy when I first met him. But I just I was laughing in his face. I was like, Why are you so angry? Like, what's, what's wrong with you? Like, why Why are you shouting? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Why are you shouting? And he's like, You know, what? I'm not training you anymore. No Go and win something, and then I'll and then I'll train you. So I was like, Okay, so you're not going to train me anymore. No he's like, No, no. And everyone that knows Tony will laugh at this interview. So he was like, No. Not training you know, not training you know. So I was like, okay, cool. I've got the Haringey Box Cup here in like two weeks. I said, when I win that, you train me. He's like, go and win something. And then I'll train you. I'll train you. And be on time. And be on time. I'm always late as well, by the way. So then, Box Cup come up. I knocked out everyone in the competition. I literally, I didn't, I came with the, um, with the medal, the gold medal. I was like, yeah, I won. And I was like, yeah, I knocked out all my opponents and I walked off. <laughs> he was, and he started laughing, he was like, this boy, literally, um, the next day, I didn't even ask him, I just came to the gym again. We carried on working and over the years, um, we just formed a good relationship. Loads of arguments in the beginning. He, he argued with all of us. All, everyone that, that was there would know, Ahara was there for a, a, a um, period of time. Everyone was arguing. Went out to Vegas together. Again, that was another form of the journey. It was crazy. And then now, it's, it's just me and Tundi. It's just me and Tony. Match made in heaven. <laughs> Anthony, I do want to ask you quickly about uh, Sir Guy's comments the other day. Uh, he said that you're not a lion, <laughs> that you're a small kitten. What did you think when you saw that? He said I'm a kitten, then he said I'm a cub. Um, cubs grow into be very dangerous lions, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but again, again, Kovalev, I can see, I can sense from from how he was, you know, he was, again, he's laughing, he's smiling, he shook my hand after all the cameras went and said, um, good luck and thank you. He seems respectful so far. Um, but again, we, as fighters, we feel things. Like, we just go from what we feel. I've seen him fight before, he's dangerous. I feel like I'm dangerous too. Um, some people are going to be thinking, oh, I'm going to go in there and fight him the same way I fought everyone else. We don't know, but we'll see Saturday. <laughs> we will do indeed. Um, but again, from what I've seen, he seems cool. Again, there's a lot of pressure on him. I don't think he's ever, I don't feel like, apart from his world title shot and things like that, and he wasn't fighting me, it feels like there's a, it seems like there's a lot of pressure on him. It seems like there's a lot of pressure on him. And in terms of the promoters, in terms of this Canelo fight talk, um, what is expected of him, the fact I've only had 12 amateur fights, 
I'm, I'm a novice. I feel like a lot of things are going through his head and the fact I'm so confident is throwing him off. And the confidence he can see from that little face-to-face with it, he can see it's not fake. <laughs> There's zero fakeness. Um, I've, I've always been put in situations where they're thinking, no way. As an amateur, when I, when I, told, when I was voicing my thoughts on what I'm going to do, I want to, because I'm starting boxing late, I want to go up, turn amateur. I'm gonna knock out everybody. I don't know how many fights I'm, I don't know how many fights I'm gonna have, but I'm gonna knock out everyone. You can't do that. It's impossible. You can't go and knock out everyone in amateur says head guards. Like you can't do it. Mike Tyson didn't do it. You can't do it. I done it. Went to um turn professional. I said the same thing, I'm gonna knock out everyone, make a name for myself. They said it's impossible, you can't knock out everyone. People specialists were saying the same thing. Steve Bunce was saying the same thing to me. You do know you can't knock out everyone. I said, me or you? I said, that's, my, that's what's in my head. That's what I'm going to try and do because that's how I'm going to make, it, make a name for myself. And um, yeah, it's happened. And I said, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to, I'm going to knock out Kovalev. Just before we close up, Canelo's guys picked Kovalev. They wanted to fight him. Now we're talking about the biggest superstar in world boxing, perhaps in combat sport at the moment, uh, in Canelo Alvarez. The fact that you blocked that fight and they offered you step aside money, mm-hmm. and from what I'm hearing, I don't know how true this is, more money to not fight Kovalev than mm-hmm. what you'll be earning on Saturday night. Again, I don't know if that's true. They were so keen to get that Canelo fight, but you come in, blocked it. Cop block. <laughs> you ever heard that term? Cop block. Loads of times. I cop blocked it raw. Now, what happened? Um, they didn't offer me more. Um, they offered me the same amount. First, they offered me less, and I laughed. I said, What a joker. And then they offered me um, the same amount. And I said, I'm weighing up the odds. I'm like, fight for a world title and get paid the same money. Again, I'm, I'm in this game gaining experience. I'm in this game to win world titles. I'm in this game to unify. I'm in this game because I'm ambitious. I'm not in this game to just snatch a bit of money and bust out. That's not me as a person. Um, fight him and get paid or don't fight him and get paid the same amount. I'm fighting him. Why am I not gonna fight why am I not gonna fight Kovalev? <laughs> the only reason the only way I wouldn't fight Kovalev if I, if I was scared. Why are you not gonna fight Kovalev? He's got a world title, he's holding something. If it was, if it was for no reason, then I'd be like, cool, give myself some money. I'm busting out. But it's for something. When there was a loads of loads of talks about oh Anthony don't wanna fight this guy, Anthony don't wanna fight this guy, there was always a reason behind it. They wanted me to fight somebody that didn't have no title, nothing. I was like, why am I fighting you? It don't make no sense for some pocket change, you don't make money. And then they then they said, the guy that had the belt, who I wanted to fight, this is a British belt, he was, there was so much things going on. He didn't want to take the contract. He didn't want to give us a contract. His manager told me face to face, the fight's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Frank Bugliani? Yes. His manager at the time, who was Steve Goodwin, said to me, this fight ain't happening. <laughs> and he was just laughing, saying, I know what's going on in the media, but I am the manager, this fight's not happening he's going to have this fight and this fight. So I said, you know what, let me stop talking about this guy. Um, I got a lot of a stick for it, saying, why aren't you fighting this person? It's called business and sport. Yeah, the sport in me says, let me just smack up this guy, let me fight this guy. That's the sport in me. But then there's a business side to it. Why am I fighting somebody that don't, ain't holding nothing? He ain't got no belt. It's just a little domestic fight for the for the um, some of the public. But now I'm on the world stage. As everyone can see, the public and the, the range of people it's reaching is way higher. And again, the method I've used to get here only shows brilliance. Well, Anthony Yard, you've given me 25 minutes of your time. Come on. And it's only... Only for you, B. You know the sit. <laughs> Come on. It's only two <laughs> days away from fight night, so it doesn't go unappreciated. Love. Uh, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. Is there anything you want to tell the fans back in the UK? Lions in the camp! I'm shouting down Russia the whole of this floor. If they don't speak English, they know how to say lions in the camp in English now. <laughs> I'm literally sitting out here and enjoying myself. I thank you for all the support. Um, if you hate me, I love you. Because you're still showing me some sort of attention. You're, you know, you're clicking on my name to say bad things about me. And I laugh at you. Because <laughs> I find it funny. <laughs> some of the things that I said. If you're with me and you're supporting me and you want me to do well, I love you more. Um, it's a journey. I'm trying to motiv- I'm even trying to motivate people, the negative people. Cause I'm like, you just need to be more positive in your life. If someone's trying to do something, support them. I support everybody that tries to do something well or tries to do something positive because again it takes something it's, it's not easy and um, yeah I commend everybody that's trying and literally I'm one of the people I'm trying 
I didn't have to start boxing. I could have went down the route of selling drugs. I had a lot of connects that I could have done, that kind of stuff. I could have went down the route of being in gangs, this typical foolishness. But I wanted to do something with my life, something that had longevity, something that was going to give me paydays, like what I'm going to get now, change my life. Um, instead of looking at small pots, you know, a couple grand here, a couple grand there, and then do life in prison. Didn't make sense to me. Um, I always told the young kids the same thing. Be motivated, be inspired. Look at the Anthony Joshua's, look at the Anthony Yards, look at the, I'm talking about British people, not, only, not even on, a, on a, the, the world scale. You know, look at the Americans. Um, look at the people that have done it, the Kill Books, you know, the Nathan Cleverleys, the all the British fighters, you know, world champions, fought for world titles, Ricky Hatton. Um, I'll be here all day naming people. These are people that you have to pay homage to because they've been there, done it. They're the people that are going to motivate you. Be inspired, you know, because before somebody done it, it was deemed to be impossible. So no one's telling you you can't be the next one. If it's not boxing, it can be something else. Lions in the camp. I think uh, a lot of people can learn from your attitude. Mm. Anthony, wish you the best of luck on Saturday night. Really yeah. do mean that uh, against Sergei Kovalev. And uh, once you get the belt, let's just get the hell out of Russia, yeah? I'm getting out of Russia. I will shake a lot of people's hands leaving. Cause, you know, because as I said before, they, 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 from where, what I've experienced, it's been good. There's a lot of bad stereotype in England about Russia. Maybe because of what they see on politics, I don't know. But um, from what I've seen here, I've been happy. But again, my, um, my flight's already booked. <laughs> so um, I'll be back on the day after. And then um, celebration time, holiday. Some happiness, treat my family well, enjoy myself. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, best of luck on Saturday night okay. and we'll catch you word after, right? Come on, love.